Australia. Former Prime Minister Scott Morrison secretly made himself Minister of Everything. Is the um, uh, government just rotten from the inside out? And what's Alba Albanese going to do? So that's what it'll be about. I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. And this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So who can believe it? I mean, former Prime Minister Scott Morrison, which so many people didn't like, but so many people did like, he got voted in, but he secretly made himself <clears throat> a, you know, co-prime minister of what? Let me read it here. Uh, health, finance, treasury, home affairs, and resources. Okay, so, and, and he didn't tell anybody. Had himself sworn in two years before he left office. So there's that. And so how does that happen? Is the Australian government, like the U.S. government, it looks like, just rotten from the inside out? And then uh, Albanese, he finds out what is he going to do? Is he going to do anything? Is this the equivalent of a Nixon pardon? We'll see. So here we go. Uh, we're going to talk about former uh, Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison, uh, secretly taking oath for five different ministries. Okay, he says it was uh, the pandemic. The pandemic did it. I had to protect the uh, country, and if those guys got uh, incapacitated, it would have been a nightmare. That's what he says. So, but why didn't he tell anybody? Okay, um, that's what a dictator does. Now, um, and to do that, Australia, uh, the government had to be corrupt on the inside, and I think it's easy to see uh, who it might be. So what's Albanese going to do? Is he going to inspect the government? Is he going to find out those people who are around making that issue happen? And wasn't the Secretary of State, who, I'm sorry, I don't understand uh, Australian politics the way I should, but whoever would have sworn him into those offices uh, knew about it. So those will be the three questions. But before we do anything, let's have a moment of meditation. Kind of, I mean, I'm very shocked. Um, first, I really took notice of Scott Morrison is when the pandemic first started. He was on a vacation uh, on some island in that sector of the world. So, yeah, Scott Morrison. Did Australia narrowly avoid an inside coup regarding Scott uh, Morrison? And name himself to those uh, ministries. So let's do three cards to start and see where that goes. Okay, so this is one, two, three. Did Australia narrowly avoid an inside coup? Let's see where this takes us. First card, Eight of Swords. So the Eight of Swords is feeling trapped. All right, um, let's see. This is typically depicted in the Rider Waite deck as uh, someone uh, surrounded by eight swords in the ground and they have uh, bandages loosely around them. They can shake those bandages uh, if they understand that. And uh, so the first card up for did Australia narrowly avoid an inside coup? If Australia is wrapped in those bandages and those uh, swords of supposed truth, lust, and truth, uh, just rules and law are surrounding Australia, and she shook loose of that through uh, the uh, election. Imagine if he'd won another term. What would he have done? Did he have a long-term plan that this had to take place over several terms? Anyway, so this is Australia. We put it right there in the middle. I think I'm going to make this into a, uh, a diet across. Six, uh, three more cards. So 
was this an inside coup? Australia shook loose of that danger surrounding her. The hanged man, looking at a thing from another perspective. Could mean a couple of things. This could mean, uh, if this is the signifier, then the challenge to Australia shaking herself loose from uh, a possible inside coup is looking at this thing from another perspective. Was Morrison honestly doing what he thought it would take to keep the Australian government safe during the time of the COVID? Or, because that doesn't seem to be his nature in the way he's conducted his business in the past, or... Looking at it another way, is that exactly what happened? And then the base of this for the static cross, look at this, the wheel of fortune. It was just luck. This could have gone any way, but um, if he hadn't been voted out of office, who knows how far this would have gone. Let's do three more cards just to finish off this uh, dyadic cross. Did Australia just narrowly avoid an inside coup? Pass to this, with the Nine of Swords is... Um, a nightmare. Okay. It's in the past, though. You got through it. It didn't happen. In the sky of this, it, truth, justice, rules, and law won out. The ace of swords, the eighth, ace of truth, ace of justice, rules, and law in the sky won out. And then um, the likely outcome did Australia nearly escape a coup. Three of swords. Broken heart. Yeah, it does. I can tell you from personal experience, being an American citizen, that it does break your heart to realize how uh, fragile your government is. So, yeah, I think they did narrowly escape a coup, but they did, didn't they? So now, uh, is Australia's government rotten from the inside out? Is Australia's government, and I mean significantly uh, compromised, not a couple of people in key positions, I mean, and I mean really no more than two, besides the, the Prime Minister, but is Australia's government and Rupert Murdoch. You know, look what he's trying to make happen in other parts of the world. Who's to say that he... Okay, so uh, this will be... Is the government rotten on the inside out? Three cards. Hopefully that's all we'll do. One, two, significantly damaged. Australia's government, inside out. First card up, justice. That's a nice card. Second card, ten of cups is uh, equivalent, the emotional equivalent to happy family. I mean, everything that you ever want. And uh, the question is, uh, Australia's government rotten from the inside out. And finding that balance, temperance. Look at that. Look at that. So I would say uh, no, it's not. Uh, there's enough justice there um, uh, with his Ten of Cups uh, representing, you know, a huge e emotional family and uh, in striking that uh, right, that correct balance. I would say no, it's not. At least not in a, in a threatening, in a sufficiently threatening uh, amount. Now, what will Albanese do? What will Albanese do? Okay, will he do anything? Okay, let's do six cards. What will Albanese do? One, two, three, four, five, and six. What will Albanese do? Six cards. First card, signifier. What will Albanese do? Three of Swords. Well, it starts with a broken heart. The uh, challenge to that with this Nine of Swords is uh, is that, again, it's a nightmare. And I love it when the cards start to repeat because it makes me feel like they're playing the game. Out of all the cards in the deck that these would come back up again, is significant to me. So Nine of Swords is that, yeah, this is a nightmare. So the cards are taking the time to explain the difficulty, the tragedy of the situation. The base of this, what will Albanese do? Three of Wands, there's long-term plans. Okay, that's excellent. Uh, uh, wands are plans, actions, forward movement. So yeah, making steps to protect that these things can't happen. The past of this reading, 
with the Six of Wands, the past is victory. And of course it is victory because that's what put Albanese in there. And so, and that's a significant uh, thing to be in the past. Okay. You didn't just come through something bad and, and, and narrowly miss it. Uh, the Australian people um, saved themselves, really, with Albanese's victory. Hopefully. And then the sky that's what would Albanese do? Two of Wands, short-term plans. Very interesting. So yeah, so he's, he's making the moves to protect the government in the short term and in the long term. And then the likely outcome, what will Albanese do with this four of wands is uh, celebrations. Okay. And there's small term, small, uh, small celebration towards something uh, larger in the future. So um, very interesting. So we'll start to celebrate those small victories that he's having uh, towards uh, securing the Australian government. So just to read it again, what would Albanese do? Well, it starts out first just really defining the issue. Three of Swords is an absolutely broken heart. And it's depicted in this card with these two birds kind of um, opposing each other. And that sort of truth, justice, rules, and law just stabbing down through the nest almost a broken heart. Typically depicted in the right away deck as a heart with three swords in it. Now, uh, the challenge to that, and again, the cards just want to let us know, this was sad, uh, is the Nine of Swords. Nine of Swords is a, a nightmare. I mean, even this fox can't sleep uh, over this, okay? Typically depicted in the right away deck as someone sleeping on a bed with nine swords hanging on the wall, getting ready to, to fall on them or they're dreaming about them. Swords of truth, justice, rules, and law. So this was, uh, besides being a heartbreak, it was a nightmare. Uh, in the base of this, with these wands, these three of wands, wands are actions, forward movement plans, and three of wands are long-term plans. Look, this, these uh, majestic uh, animals here are standing on each other's back to see into the future, to see, try to see what needs to be protected. In the past of this reading, uh, with this Six of Wands, uh, this is absolute victory. And this isn't the victory of Albanese. This is the victory of the Australians who uh, changed course. The Two of Wands up in the sky here are, of course, uh, with this rabbit in charge, look, holding on to the world. And, uh, and with these Two of Wands uh, forward movement plans is securing everything in the short term while we're planning for the long term. Perfect cards for this reading. And then the final outcome for will Albanese do anything, if anything, with this four wands. So yeah, the wands are actions, four movement plans, uh, and uh, fire. And so this four of wands represented with these two cute rabbits. I mean, they're kind of curled up with each other into a, a, a laurel celebratory wreath. And um, so I always say that for me, the four of wands are small term celebrations toward something larger. So yeah, these are the small term celebrations and something larger will be here. So really nailing down the protections for the government. That's what's happening here. Interesting reads, I would say. So let me know what you think. Also, let me know what you would like me to read on because I'll read on that. So um, make a comment. Tell me what's going on in your life even. And uh, we'll uh, do this again uh, soon. Yeah, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. Okay, so these cards are, are the, just the latest thing, I believe. So this is by the artist uh, is Ciolo, Ciolo Thompson. Ciolo Thompson. And it's, this is called the Line Strider Tarot. The Line Strider Tarot. It comes in a great box. And it's, it's got some beautiful imagery on the outside of the box. And a nice little introduction back here. Uh, I like this. is Body, Mind, and Spirit Tarot. So very interesting. But uh, the box itself is one of the cool uh, magnetic snaps. It's beautiful. It's got a nice glossy finish. It really feels uh, like a, a precious uh, stationery would come in here. The book is amazing quality. I mean, I don't, I don't know if you can see it, but like each one of these pages is just, there's really good quality. And the book is full color. And it's interesting here because it talks just a little bit about Solio Thompson. And I'll just tell you very quickly that she's a self-taught visual artist and she lives in the Seattle, Washington area. And um, so this is her first uh, deck. So the first published deck anyway. And then in, over here, she's talking about this was a journey for her and uh, the line started deck uh, has got a lot of animal uh, imagery and that it brings in some uh, tarot images from her childhood now she grew up uh, where she grew up in she was born in uh, western samoa and then uh, she also uh, lived in bolivia and so uh, she has an amazing uh, childhood and um and brought a lot of attention to the cards so there we go the book is fantastic the cards themselves are also 
pretty amazing. But I mean, they're a gentle spirit. They're a good quality of card. You know, they're stiff, they're uh, slicky, but they don't cause a problem. They shuffle uh, really well. And um, so, you know, they're just great. And then they're very easy to interpret. And the reason is that uh, each card really tells you right there what's on the card. Okay, so you don't have to just rely on the imagery, but if you really look at what's drawn on there, it's pretty amazing. I mean, and then you start to wonder why did she uh, allow, uh, allow this animal for this particular uh, divination. So the beautiful cards, good suggestions in the book, how to um, you know use them. And I just lay them out like this so you have a chance to look at uh, more than just the few cards that, uh, you know, reader pulls out when they're doing our shtick. And then... Um, you know, maybe um, you might decide uh, you like the cards. If you don't get to see a lot of cards, I know when I was just watching um, this stuff on uh, YouTube, I wanted to see more cards than I was seeing. So there we go. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now. You really make a big difference. Thank you.